Hello and welcome to the QA Underground. In today's video, we're going to be talking about how to create an API testing framework using C Sharp and Visual Studio. If you're new to the channel but enjoy testing related content, feel free to hit the subscribe button down below or hit the like button on the way out. We definitely appreciate the support. With the intro out of the way, let's get into what today's video will cover. In today's video, we're going to be talking about how to create an API testing framework. We'll achieve this by performing the following steps. First, we'll create a new test project. Then we'll create a new services project, followed by creating a services builder class. Then we will add a reference to the services project to the test project. Finally, we will create a test method that tests the API using references from the services project and run the test and verify. First thing we're going to do is create a new project. So we'll click new. And we're going to go under web and console. We'll select tests and we'll select in unit test project and then next. We'll click next. For project name, we're going to enter QA underground API test. And then we'll click create. Once that's open, we can delete the automatically generated unit test. Right click delete, confirm with delete. So you'll notice here we only have one project, right? So that's what the project that we created initially, which is QA underground API tests. Ideally, when I'm working with API tests, I like to create two separate projects, one being the services project and another being the test project that calls the services project. And why I do that is because I like to have the services be its own project and house where we will create our URIs for multiple different APIs, right? So most projects will contain more than one API. So we want to make sure that we have a project that's dedicated to building the URIs that we need to test with, and then we can call them from the test project. So we'll start by creating our new project. We'll go up to our solution, right click add, click new project. We're gonna, under the web and console, we'll select tests, select next, make sure .NET Core 3.1, select next. And then for the project name, we're gonna call this services. Then we'll click create. Again, we can delete the unit test that it's automatically generated. And then within the services project, we're going to right click and we're going to add a new folder. We're going to call that folder weather. Click add. And then we're going to right click on weather and click add, then new file. And then we're going to add an empty class called weather API and then select new. So in here, we're going to get rid of this generated code. Now we're going to set up our HTTP client. So we're going to do private HTTP client. We're going to call the variable rest client equals new HTTP client. We'll close it out for parentheses. So now we're going to add the dependency for that. So we'll do quick actions. We're going to use using system.net.http. Next, we're going to do private string URI equals, and then we're going to pass in the endpoint for our API. So for this case, I'm using the weather.gov endpoint. Now we're going to do a public async call. So because we're doing a call to the endpoint, so we'll do public async task. We're going to pass in string because that's the type we want returned. We'll do get underscore. And we're actually going to want the reason phase returned here for our test example. So we'll say get underscore reason phrase. And I'll make a little comment here. So this is where we're going to build the URI. We're first going to start with our request headers. And these headers I got from sending this request in Postman, or you can find them other means. We're going to start with REST client dot default request headers dot try 
add without validation and inside there we're going to pass in the headers that we want to be passed along when we send our request. So I'm actually going to fill these in with the request headers that I got from Postman. And in Postman, I know that there are three of them, so I'm gonna actually make a generic one here and I'm gonna copy it two additional times. And then again, I'm gonna fill in the request headers that I got when I ran this call through Postman. Once that's done, we can add our dependency for task, which is system threading dot task. Next, we'll make a note here that says makes the get call to the rest endpoint. We'll start with doing a var response equals await rest client dot get async and then we're going to pass in our URI. We'll make another note here that says read the reason phrase from the response as a string. So now we're going to do a var reason phrase equals response dot reason phrase dot two string so we can read it and then finally we're simply going to return our reason phrase back to the test and we can get rid of this unused dependency at the top here and finally we will file safe so now we want to add that project to our test project. So we're going to right click, add reference, and inside here we're going to select the projects tab and select our services project and select OK. So we'll clean and rebuild. So if we look inside of our dependencies, we'll see a projects folder now, dependency, and then we'll see our dependency on the services. That means that our test project can now access the services. So we're going to right click, add, new folder, we're going to call this folder weather API. We'll click add, we'll right click on weather API, click add, click new file, add a new empty class called weather API underscore tests and we'll click new. So we can get rid of this using statement at the top. We won't be using that. And we'll also get rid of this generated public method inside of the class. So we'll start by creating some attributes. We'll add our test attribute. We'll add the dependency for that, which is using nunit.framework. And then below that, we're going to add a category attribute. And we will call that API tests. This is a simple way to keep your tests organized when you're running them. 
We'll start off by doing a public async task. We'll call it API underscore tests. We'll add the reference for task, which is again system.threading.tasks. Inside there, we'll create our instance of weather API. So we'll do weather API, call our variable weather API equals new weather API. Try adding the reference for weather API up here. So we'll do services.weather. Deal is erring, so we'll clean our build, build it, see if that fixes our error, and it did not. So we'll just directly reference weather.api, so we'll do services.weather.weatherapi, and then we'll do the same on the other side to fix the error. I'm not sure why that didn't resolve itself when I added the reference above. If you know, please leave a comment down below. Next, we'll do our var, we'll do reason phase, because that's what we want to come back, equals await, and then we'll do, we'll call that method within the weather API, so we'll do weather API dot get underscore reason phrase. And then we'll add an assertion just to validate that it is returning what we want. So we'll do assert dot r equal, and then I'm expecting the reason phrase to say okay, so I'll pass okay as my expected and then we'll pass in the reason phrase. So before we run it, we'll, we'll file save, we'll do a clean, we'll build all, verify we have no errors. Doesn't look like any. So I'm gonna go down to the test tab and inside of our test project, we should have a test now. And we will right click run test. and it looks like it passed. So normally if you were running things and you wanted to see the output, you could do show results and the output from any like console right lines would show up an output. In today's video, we covered how to create an API testing framework using the C-sharp language and Visual Studio. We went over how to create a test project, create a services project, and then add a reference to that services project to that test project and create a test method that utilized the services project to test the API. Once again, if you're a regular or new to the channel, let me know if you like this style of content by hitting the like button down below. And if you're not already a subscriber to our channel, but enjoy the content, I'd encourage you to hit the subscribe button on the way out. Thanks for tuning in and I will see you on the next video.